Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. Today I'm joined by Kenta Yaskawa, the CTO of Soracom. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So tell us about Soracom. What do you do? Yes, Soracom, we offer Internet of Things connectivity platform. So when it comes to uh, implement innovative IoT applications, you need to somehow connect real world objects to cloud environment. So we offer connectivity to uh, different kinds of devices like uh, cars, homes, and even cows, <laughs> like animals. Yeah, I was laughing because this is the first time we have a cow on an architecture diagram on, on right. this series. So, so thank you. Let's let's dive in here. So, you know, I have my Raspberry Pi at home, for example, or, or another device, and I can connect over Wi-Fi over the internet, or mm -hmm. I can have a SIM card and over cellular connectivity. So, uh, you know, what is different from what I'm doing as a hobbyist at home, and, and right. what your platform and your solution offers? Yeah, nothing wrong in doing that. Uh, but when it comes to real uh, IoT applications, security is our biggest concern. Uh, so usually when you use uh, wi home Wi-Fi or cellular, you go to internet to reach to AWS environment. Uh, in our case, what makes us unique is we have a, a special uh, SIM card dedicated to redesign for uh, IoT. This one actually connects uh, cellular modules directly to our en environment on top of AWS. So you don't have to go through internet to reach to AWS. You already next hop is uh, AWS. That's interesting, you know, because a lot of our enterprise customers use Direct Connect, so they can effectively connect privately to the cloud, to AWS. So what you're saying is if you have a cellular connected IoT device, you can also have a private connection to the cloud that doesn't traverse the internet, is that right? Exactly. So are you a mobile network operator yourself, or how, do you, how does that work? We are not um, MMO by ourselves. Uh, we are a mobile virtual network operator. So we have agreements with different operators like AT&T and T-Mobile, so that they can uh, use their uh, cellular network to connect their devices. Okay, great. So let's walk through this architecture. So you've built this solution in AWS that allows connectivity to the cloud. So starting over here with your connected devices, how does it actually get into the cloud? How does it connect? Right. So uh, let's say we these devices have our SIM card. Then uh, they can connect to cellular tower uh, that is nearby. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, you know, the cellular tower. And the, uh, our MNO partners, uh, we can use their network to uh, transfer data to our direct connect link. And uh, this link is connected to our network elements implemented on top of EC2. So uh, in cellular network, a protocol called GTP, GPRS tunneling protocol is used between uh, MNO and MVNO like us. Yeah. And we terminate this protocol on top of EC2 so that we can route traffic to from devices to AWS environment or internet. Interesting, so this is maybe like 3G or LTE connectivity? Exactly, this is 3G, LTE, or even could be 2G. Yeah. Okay, so then you use GTP, and so this part over here, I guess you're effectively uh, terminating the mobile connection, is that right? Yes, exactly. We have implemented a network element called P-Gateway for LTE, and this actually uh, corresponds to a gateway at the MNO side and we terminate cellular network on top of EC2. Okay, and I see you have two AZs and what looks like clusters of, of EC2 servers, so is that for high availability for the termination? Yes, so for availability and also uh, scalability, we have implemented a distributed uh, version of P-Gateway so that we can anytime add more EC2 instances to scale more, mm -hmm. or we can even uh, scale in by reducing instances. Okay, so that's kind of differentiating for your solution, right? Because most of the time they're hardware appliances and you can't scale those up or down. Exactly, so uh, we actually uh, applied all the AWS best practices as we know, and we have kept these components so completely stateless. And we store all the information uh, back in our microservices core so that we can uh, anytime uh, scale in and out this component. Yeah, that's great, because IoT devices can connect and disconnect and they can come online or come offline and effectively scale up or scale down. So exactly. you need a termination infrastructure that supports that as well. Right. So you said stateless. So are you storing the state? I see DynamoDB down here. Is that what, that what this is for? Exactly. So we try to, um, we access uh, from these components, we access our microservices backend through the VPC peering link. Yeah. Uh, so our microservices run in a separate VPC zone and they actually uh, work with DynamoDB to serve these components. Okay, great. So yeah, moving to this part, I see how you've separated into separate VPCs. So, so why is that? I understand that you have the termination front end, but why is this the microservices in a separate VPC? So we, when we connected M uh, MNO partners, we needed to use global IP address space. 
So uh, for that, we have uh, our VPC in with global IP address range. Okay. And in order to scale uh, this part, uh, we needed to have a large private address space. That's why we separated these two. Okay, great. And then these, I imagine, are clusters of EC2 instances running your microservices? Right. So each component, session management, authentication, authorization, and also uh, billing components, they run uh, as an independent microservice, and they have uh, its own uh, EC2 cluster. Okay, so not only is this sort of a um, platform to terminate connections, it's also a mobile network sort of management platform you've built. Microsoft. Exactly, right. Okay, and I see you have an API gateway. Uh, does that allow users to sort of configure these or, or interact with them? Exactly, so when you manage uh, IoT network, you need to you know, activate, deactivate SIM card, or sometimes you need to throttle speed for each SIM card. Okay. We actually expose API through this API gateway, and um, API Gateway performs uh, work with the uh, dif different microservices to make sure uh, authentication is completed and also uh, throttling and etc. And we uh, apply configuration that user uh, gives to us to this network elements through the services. Okay, great. So users can interact via the API. I also see you have S3 Cloud Run. I'm going to guess that this is for a user interface. Exactly. So. Um, this S3 plus cloud font we use for uh, distributing our web console. Our web console is basically a single page application, so it's completely static. So we use this uh, com combination to distribute that to users. That's great, and a little bit of serverless up here is nice. Exactly. Yeah. Great, so you have a, a web interface that users can use. You have a, an API gateway, uh, a DynamoDB to store the state for all of your microservices running in EC2. You're doing some pretty novel things when it comes to uh, termination and, and gateway scalability over here. It's a really interesting architecture. Thank you so much. Actually, one thing, another thing I, it, which is interesting is uh, since we terminate cellular network on top of AWS, if you run your IoT backend on top of AWS, you can just uh, appear with your VPC uh -huh. and pre -cre create totally private network of things and your servers. Uh -huh. That is uh, another thing I want to mention. Yeah, I know, very interesting. Yeah, so you can actually have an end-to-end -end private environment for your mobile connectivity or for your IoT connectivity. Exactly. Very cool. Thanks for sharing this with us. My pleasure. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture.